most people have a pretty basic knowledge of the sto- story, a biblical story of Noah and the ark, right? God warned Noah that a flood was coming and that he had to build this giant boat, right? And so he, be- he obeyed the Lord and he did that. It took him one hundred and twenty years to build that ark how many of you think that was a feat of perseverance wow honoring the lord like that now supernaturally animals began to gather and began to come into the ark and god did exactly what he warned noah would happen right the fountains of the deep broke up the bible tells us that it rained for 40 days and 40 nights it's kind of felt like that in Houston recently. Do I got a witness in the house? Hello? Uh, thank God all of that's going away, right? But God sent a universal flood that literally destroyed all of humanity except for eight people who were in the ark. Amen. And so uh, let me just say that there are many people who have viewed this story about Noah as somewhat of a type of fable. There are even people who would say, well, this is a story that was invented by religious people in order to get them to, uh, you know, kind of to control who, you know, what people do. And, and, and they kind of mock Noah and the ark. And there are people who would say, well, there's very little evidence that this, act, act, that this actually happened. That is absolutely not true. All right? The, st- no, the story of Noah and the ark is not a fable. This is an event that really occurred as the Lord has said that it occurred. When I was in Bible college, now though that was a long time ago, I read a great book called The Genesis Flood. All right? It, the, the subtitle of the book is called The Biblical Record and Its Scientific implications by John Whitcomb and Henry Morris. And this book basically proves through a study of geology and a study of the signs all around the world that the story of Noah and the ark actually absolutely 100% is true, right? That, you know, that God's word validates itself by science. Can we have a hand for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Amen. And people have scoffed and said, you know, there's no way that a boat could have held all of the animals of the world. Scientifically, they have been proven by scholars that, yes, that could absolutely 100% have happened. Let me tell you something. The Bible is true. The Genesis flood actually happened. Now, there are many passages that talk about Noah. But I want to talk and focus our attention today on Hebrews chapter 11 and verse number 7. All right? Are you ready for the word today? All right, here it is. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. We are going to really dig into this verse today, all right? Now, I want you to know that this verse is not just about Noah and his day, all right? This verse is about our day that we're living in because, you see, Jesus compared the days of Noah to the days which we're living in. Did you realize that in Scripture? Let me give you the Scripture, Matthew 24, verse 37. How many of you are realizing I'm laying a foundation here today? Follow with me. It says, but as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of of the Son of Man be. In other words, what Jesus was saying, he's saying the same conditions that had to do with God judging the world in the days of the flood, those same conditions are going to be seen in the world as we get close to the coming of the Lord, all right? And so if if those same conditions are going to exist like that, how many of you realize, come on, that we've got to have the same faith Noah had? 
That's, that, makes this, that makes this verse that we're studying in Hebrews 11 and 7 very powerful. All right, follow with me. Matthew 24, verse 38. It says, For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Well, you say, Pastor Bob, what were the conditions of the world in Noah's day? This verse here, I believe, tells us that the primary condition of the world in Noah's day was really an indifference to spiritual things. The world of that day was indifferent to spiritual things. How do you know? It's because when the flood came, they, they weren't ready. They didn't get on the boat. They perished. They got swept away. Come on. They did not listen, even though the Peter tells us that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Amen. Yet for all of his preaching, he really had very little impact on the culture that he lived in. Why? Because of the indifference in the hearts of men and women. And I want you to understand today that in the world that we are living in, uh, outside of the realm of Christianity, there's a lot of indifference, especially in the United States of America, to the things of God. You say, well, Pastor, how many people would be attending church in Houston today? They've done a study on that. Thank God for the Houston Baptist Association. They did a study on that. And they tell me that 15, not 50, only 15% of the people who live in the city of Houston are actually attending church this morning. Come on. And this is the buckle of the Bible belt. What you say, well, what's happening? There's an indifference to the gospel. In 1950, it would have been about 65% of the population would be in church. But let me tell you, in Noah's day, people were more concerned just about the things of life, eating and drinking and getting married. They were just concerned about living their life. They weren't listening to what God had said. They weren't listening to the preacher of righteousness. And the scripture says, that that indifference caused them to be taken away. And seriously, wouldn't you think that a supernatural movement of animals to the ark would cause people to kind of scratch their head and say, man, I think I need to get in line. I've heard what Noah said. I've heard that what he preached about. I think I'm going to get on that ark too. But you see, they just ignored it. They pretended that it didn't happen. And the scripture uses these words. It says they were Eating. Now, how many of you know we got to eat to live? Hello? I'm going to eat today. Amen. Amen. But it says they were drinking. I, I, I believe it. That's a reference to the fact that they were getting drunk. Many people today think that that's the greatest thing in the world, to go out and to get drunk. Let me tell you something. It goes on to say they were marrying and giving in marriage. Now, we know from our newlyweds today that that's a good thing, right? Getting married is okay. But I, this, if you do some referencing about this, you'll understand that it wasn't just about somebody getting married. No, it was about the multiplicity of marital partners that they had in that day. Now, how many of you realize that our world is changing marriage today? I still believe and I still stand for the fact that God's Word declares that marriage is between one man and one woman. Can I have a hand of praise today? Amen. Amen. But yet today, the world says, no, it can be two men, it can be two women. You know, there's this thing called polyamorous relationships. I don't care how big of a fancy word you put on stuff. The Bible calls it sin. Hello? There are people there today have open marriage, and I could go on and on. And Genesis chapter 6 tells us how the conditions of Noah's day and how God felt about all that. He says this, this that the Lord saw. How many of you know that the Lord sees everything that's going on? The Lord knows what's happening in our world. He says he saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thought of his heart was only evil continually and the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth and he was grieved in his heart let me tell you I believe that you and I are living in the last days don't you I believe that, that we're seeing days like Noah that, that like Noah saw days like that was in the time of, 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 of Lot amen and Billy Graham and I love and respect Billy Graham come on he, he said these words he said one day he said if God 
God doesn't judge this world that we live in today, he's going to have to apologize to the people in Lot's day and the people in Noah's day. Come on. I'm telling you, we're living in a day that needs to see a revival among the people in our world today. Come on. And I believe, and I've got some really good news today. Amen. In spite of all the godliness that is out there, godlessness that is out there. Come on. I believe that God is raising up groups of people around the world who are saying this. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Come on. We're going to walk with God. We're going to be who He called us to be. And I believe that we can see the faith of Noah demonstrated in our world today. How many of you are with me?